December retail sales out this morning showing that U.S. consumer spending continued to prove resilient to round out 2023, but on the other hand, another economic powerhouse continues to struggle. China's economy slowed to a three-decade low in 2023. Brent Schutte, who is the Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management Chief Investment Officer, is here to help us break it all down. How surprising from your perspective is a reading like this, Brent? Well, I think the retail sales number was strong, but as your prior guest mentioned, I think there are signs the consumer is starting to, to feel a little bit of the higher interest rates. And I think the market is now figuring out that the U.S. economy is still too strong for the Fed to cut rates, that inflation is not dead. We saw that in last week's CPI numbers, where core CPI continues to come in below 3%, uh, as well as some of these trim mean measures that are trying to tease out the underlying pace of inflation. They've actually accelerated over the past few months. And so to me, the reason the market's struggling just a bit is because uh, the market which had priced in aggressive rate cuts, uh, and that led to the fourth quarter rally, are now starting to take those out, and that's causing a little bit of the higher interest rates and causing stocks to, to uh, push a little bit lower. And so kind of compare that for us, because here in the U.S. there's the resiliency, but then in China there's the effort to try and stimulate the economy and the, the spending. So if we're kind of comparing and contrasting what's take place, taking place and where there are perhaps some, some overlaps, because earlier in the trading session, we saw stocks moving lower, largely in reaction to that data that came out of China. And then you got the add-on with a surprise report in the U.S. retail sales figure as well. Yeah, look around the globe, the economy is slowing. You look at it in Europe, it's slowing. You look at it in China, it's slowing. Certainly the Chinese economy has been slowing for some time. They have a, a large set of issues they're dealing with. And so to me, it's not surprising that you're seeing economies around the globe slowing at similar times just because of the uh, impact of rate increase that has occurred. China's a little bit unique in its own right, where it has actually been trying to stimulate just a bit, but certainly not enough to pull their economy out of the doldrums that it has seen over the past few years. So, Brennan, in the market action today and what we heard from Waller yesterday, taking all that into account, we're starting to see maybe a bit of an adjustment in terms of the timing of that rate hike, like you just alluded to a minute ago. I'm curious how this has, has that at all impacted your view and your expectations for rate cuts and the timing of them? Look, we don't think the Fed's going to cut rates unless they see wages move sustainably lower. And so the reason why inflation pulled back last year was largely, uh, as we expected, because it was tied to COVID. What you are seeing now is that inflation is tied more towards the end of an economic cycle where we run out of workers to hire. You mentioned it in your NHB report where you said a shortage of labor, a shortage of lumber leading to higher prices. That is not disinflation. And so to me, the Fed does not cut rates until it sees the pace of wages slow and until it sees the inflationary uh, numbers come down much more, which they've actually stalled out at 3%. I think the last mile is still harder. Uh, and that's where I don't think the Fed cuts uh, until they see that happen. And, and that largely means that you're going to likely have a recession because they're going to keep the pressure on the U.S. economy from a rate perspective until they see the labor market weaken. And typically, once that happens, it tends to trend. So, Brent, then what does that mean for equities when you see this run up a lot of excitement about the Fed cutting some of that optimism already priced in? What does the downside then potentially look like? I think there's some downside in large cap stocks because they do trade at 20 and a half times uh, earnings that are expected to grow 7%. And they have pushed higher on the back in the belief that the Fed would be cutting uh, on the back of lower interest rates and lower inflation. And so I, I do think there's some downside risk there. I, I think even though inflation is set to probably uh, continue where it's at, I still think investors should be thinking about fixed income. Um, current rates are still around 5% on uh, investment grade fixed income, which I think does protect you against uh, some of the inflation that largely may come back. But ultimately, if you think about it, if we do get a recession, I think rates push lower and that's where bonds will prove uh, to be a, a real uh, return vehicle. So on the other side of that, Brent, is there a trade to fade in the events that we do see a cut or the probability for a cut continue to diminish on the likelihood that a, that cut may be pushed back or pushed out even further? Look, I, I just think you want to be careful here and you want to be cautious. I, you mentioned the other side of this. To me, the other side of this does have some good news. I mean, there are parts of the market that I've referenced before, and hopefully most of your guests are long-term investors. I think U.S. small caps, U.S. mid caps, those trade at 14 times earnings uh, that have already been marked down some and aren't expected to grow. Compare and contrast that to the large cap segment. I think the other side of this shows that small caps do very well, and I'd encourage uh, investors to add those as we go through the uh, what, what I think will be a, a, a couple tough months coming up in the not too distant future. All right, Brent Schutte, always great to uh, speak with you there and get your insight. Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management Chief Investment Officer. Thanks, Brent. Thank you.